you can be a Beyonce and you still get cheated on. <laughs> That's why y'all need to get a copy of the book. Seven. Oh yes, I like that. <laughs> I did not come to play with you hoes. <laughs> I came to slay, bitch. I like cornbread. Thank God. Hi everyone, it is your girl Ruth Amore, and I am here with the lovely Winsome Duncan, oh, award-winning like author, and you have written twelve books. Um, it says you are passionate about writing books, scripts, storytelling and motivational speaking. Um, it says you started out as a poet called Lyrical Healer and amassed 125, 125,000 views on YouTube. So Winsome, please tell us a little bit more about your journey and what you are doing now. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, it's actually 14 books now, so I need to update my bio. I'm currently writing my 15th book, which is called Just Market It. And it's to help budding authors to sell their books once they publish it with us. So basically, you know, I'm a creative at heart. I think that's the first thing. That's a gift that God has been given to, God has given to me. I wake up every day. I have mad, manic, busy days, but I'm living on purpose. This is what I was born to do. So I, I help authors and I help business people to turn their stories into books. Everyone's got a story. So for example, let's just say I have a story. What would be the kind of advice you would give to me if I wanted to be a published author? Okay, so I would say to you, what is your story about? That's the first question that I would ask. I would find out if your manuscript is finished. When we work together, we've got a professional industry standard contents page that is just a standard in, in book industry publishing. And that's what we work with, essentially. And when we work with that, there's extra work to be done on a so-called finished manuscript. I'd find out, Ruth, what is your subject matter? What is your expertise? The thing about it is to have a book, it's a calling card. It is a way in which you look like an expert or an authority um, in your field. I've heard some amazing things and some deep things like domestic violence stories, cancer survivors, poets, self-development, money management, you know, diabetes, just some incredible people I've gotten to meet on this journey. And the momentum is building now. So once I've ascertained what it is that you want to write, we'll sort of dissect it and see what is the best selling one, really? What will you monetize the best? Books are not just things you put on the shelf, right? Books can be transformative for generations, for cultures in terms of history, in terms of self-confidence, like seeing yourself in there. Literature is much bigger than a book, right? It's much bigger than a book. The last time I checked, it was free to pick up a pen and to pick up a paper and to write. It costs nothing, yeah? Pick up the pen and write. Tell your story, leave your legacy. It is so important. And the thing about it is, in the UK, only 1% of BAME main characters are in books. That's black and ethnic um, minority children are in books. 1% of BAME main characters. And then 4% of them are the little sidekicks or the friends. They're not even the protagonists. And it really angers me that in that objects are more relevant than black or brown children so when I say that I'm coming in to, to do this publishing and to change lives and to make a difference that's what I'm I'm serious if you're not serious please don't call me don't email yeah. me don't text me so you guys you just got some free tips don't tell me I don't give you anything when someone's dropping some knowledge well, today I just put some information out about the Look Like Me book challenge, which is going to be over three consecutive months. And we're going to be working with 30 budding children authors from ages 7 to 12 to make a community collective book and to come together and tell one story with their ideas of images that look like them. And this is not something that I don't think has been done 
on this level, on this scale. And the first one kicks off on the 4th of July and we've got some wonderful facilitators that we're going to be working in. And you can go to the website, which is www.looklikeme.co.uk and you can sign up and, you know, get, get, get your young people involved in improving their literacy and changing the narrative of children's books in the book industry. Let's just take a little side step um, into the book that I have in my hands right now, everybody. <laughs> the book is entitled, He Loves Me Not, What to Do When Online Dating Hurts. Okay. Tell us, please, what do you do when online dating hurts? Some of us are single out here in the hot sun, wanting to be in a relationship with a beautiful man. The first thing that I would say is the spirit of discernment. Always let that be your guide, your intuition. Second thing I would say is you've got to be really aware of smoke and mirrors. People can say anything online, you know, you need to really check their backstory and there's tools that I provide in the book in order to assist that and I think lastly you know when it hurts you've got to go through the pain you've got to feel it and you've got to go through the pain you kind of got to assess what what was it that you did wrong what was it that they did wrong what was your part in it have some ownership have some responsibility what has been the worst date you have ever had the worst date that I ever had was with a guy who we went to Saturday Bar in Brixton and he was talking to himself and he didn't eat. And then when he got on the bus, sitting there swearing. So did you get a, a date too? Was there a date too? No! Get out of it! No, <laughs> I blocked him and I, and, I, and I put on my phone something like cray cray. Do not pick up. <laughs> no. Cray, cray, no. if you're out there, there is somebody for you. Do not no. give up. <laughs> it's oh just my not gosh. <laughs> It ain't me, cray, cray. It ain't me. Question number two. Ooh, how many people can you date at one time? In the UK, it's quite traditional to just date one person at a time. However, in America, you can be dating two, three, four, five people at a time. So it's subjective. If you're asking me directly going out on dates, I'd say about two. How long do you have to date before becoming exclusive? <laughs> three months. Three months? <laughs> is because you need to, to check if they're cray-cray and you need to see if they change, you know, because people be acting brand new out here nowadays. So you need to test the waters and find out why one, really. So, yeah, that's why. Is it okay to redate somebody? Is it okay or is it like sloppy seconds sort of thing? Sloppy seconds sort of thing. Because, you know, the past is the past. And unless they've got a new transplant personality, are they really going to change? Oh, I remember one, I saw him on the DLR. He was trying to chat me and I was just like, no, no, we're not, we're not doing that. Oh, wow, Winston, that was um, a really unbiased answer. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I'm telling all my secrets, Ruth. All my secrets, I'm telling them all. Is it ever okay to date your friend's ex? No. Dirty girl, dirty man, no. Firebun that, firebun, 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 no. Run, run, next question. Uh... Next question. <laughs> next question is top three qualities you look for in a partner. Attentive listening, affection, affectionate, and I would say somewhat ambitious. Last one is, have you ever dated a celebrity? Woo-hoo! Have I ever dated a celebrity? 
<laughs> Can I say no comment? No. <laughs> Do I look like Oprah to you? <laughs> Are you ready? Everybody gets a call! <laughs> I've, I've had some entanglement. I got into an entanglement with... An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> come on! Come on! <laughs> come on! I was an actor. I'll give you this one. There was an actor that I was seeing and he was in one of Idris's projects. And that's it. That's it. I'm not saying no more. So wait, there's more than one because you said first he was a singer, then you yeah, but we're not talking about singer, no. We're talking wait about actor a now. minute. Actor now, actor now. Wait, what sorry now. Idris? I said have you dated a celebrity singular, right? With my little dry life. Winston comes in here like, well, there was a singer, there was this actor. Excuse me, that my dry life. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. I'm gonna open the book at a page, read a line mm -hmm. or so, and then I will let you elaborate. So, oh, rule number 27. What a suspect. If a man only calls you or messages you on WhatsApp, it's a red flag. He is either too cheap to top up his phone or he is desperately trying to save money. <laughs> <laughs> red flag. Red flag. Jeez. Wow. Wow. They got another number, Ruth, yeah? If they've only got a WhatsApp call number and you can only call that number and you can't ring it, they've got another number. So if they've got another number, they're players. They're fronting. And it's a red flag because, you know, they can only touch that number certain times because probably their girl or their wife's about. You understand? Yeah. These are my mistakes. I made them so that you can learn from them and hopefully do not repeat them. Beard versus clean shape. Beard. Rich versus handy. Rich. All right, all right, all right. Romantic versus hardworking. Romantic. Piercings versus tattoos. Tattoos. Innocent versus experienced. Experienced. Religious versus party animal. Religious. Celebrity. Or go with an X. Ah, celebrity. Bald or locks? Old. Old v young. Young. Soca versus reggae. Reggae. Soca versus R and B. R and B. Morgan Freeman versus James L. Jones. I don't know who James L. Jones is. What? who James L. Jones is. Bro, what are you talking about, man? In closing, what do you want to leave with us? What do you want to tell us? If you do want to write a book and you have that unction, the first thing to do is get a copy of this. This is the Just Write It workbook. Tell your story, write your book, all right? The reason why you should get a copy of that is because it lays out everything. It's about leaving legacies of people of colour. That's what I'm passionate about. People from my community, people that look like me, you know. So that's the first thing that I'd encourage you to do. And then my words of wisdom that I want to leave to everybody out there, you know, experience is the teacher. It's progress, not perfection. And you can achieve so much if you just have the right mindset. So always remember, the mind is like a parachute. It works best when open. To people like yourself and others that are listening online, be encouraged. It's not over until you win. All I do is win, 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 no matter what.